The first step in doing a partial traction expansion is the classification of the denominator polynomial roots. Now let's first talk about the multiplicity of roots. Multiplicity is the number of times the root is repeated. For example, in this denominator polynomial, s plus 1 is repeated twice. So it is a squared here. So there are two roots at minus 1. Therefore, the multiplicity of the root minus 1 is 2. Well, as for, for the root 0 associated with this s, the multiplicity is 1. But roots can be real. So the roots associated with s times s plus 1, the whole squared, are real. And obviously, roots can be complex. So the roots associated with s squared plus 2, s plus 2, are complex. So let's look at systematic partial fraction expansion. Partial fraction expansion depends on the denominator only. Each simple root with multiplicity 1, a simple real root with multiplicity 1 contributes 1 term. So s here contributes a divided by s. Each root with multiplicity n contributes n terms. So s plus 2 the whole squared contributes 2 terms b divided by s plus 2 plus c divided by s plus 2 the whole square. Suppose it was s plus 2 the whole cube, there would be additional term here with the denominator s plus 2 the whole cube. Each complex root contributes two special terms. So this, this complex root here, actually it's a pair, s square plus 2, s plus 2 contributes this term right here and this term right here. In handling complex roots, the first step is to write the polynomial containing the complex root in a form that is convenient to be inverted as an exponential decaying cos or sine term. And this process is called completing the square. So if you have polynomial s squared plus a0 of s plus a1, you can write it in this form as s plus a0 divided by 2 the whole squared plus root of a1 minus a0 squared by 4 the whole thing squared. Now that is uh, in the form s plus a the whole squared plus omega squared. The a is a0 by 2 and omega is root of a1 minus a0 squared by 4. Let's look at an example. Here you have s squared plus 1 times s plus 5 can be written as s squared plus 2 times half of s plus 1 divided by 4. So that this is s plus half the whole square, this one. Now since we add a 1 by 4, we need to remove 1 by 4. So it's 5 minus 1 by 4. And that gives us s plus half the whole square plus the root of 19 by 4 the whole squared. Let's look at uh, solving for coefficients in the partial fraction expansion. For simple roots, we multiply both sides with the denominator of the simple root and evaluate both sides of the real root. Let's look at example. In this example, 1 divided by s or s equal to 0 is a simple root. Let's solve for a. Multiply both sides by s. What happens? This s cancels with this s. This s cancels with this s. We left with a. All these terms end up having s on the top. And if you evaluate both sides, i.e. the left hand side and right hand side at s equal to 0, all these terms drop out, leaving a. And a is therefore equal to 1 divided by 20. Now let's look at solving for the highest power of the repeated root. So for the repeated root, you look at the highest power here, which is s plus 2 the whole squared. Let's solve for c. This is the same as solving for a simple root. Multiply the denominator, which is s plus 2 the whole squared, on both sides of the equation. So 
So s plus 2 the whole square gets cancelled here. Get a s plus 2 the whole square here. You get a s plus 2 along with b. This s plus 2 the whole square cancels with this. So you're left with c and all these other terms have s plus 2 the whole square. So evaluate the entire expression at s equal to minus 2. This drops out, this drops out, this drops out and this drops out and you get c equal to 1 divided by 10. So there's a slightly different way of solving for the coefficient of the second highest power of the repeat root, third highest power of the repeated root. So instead of multiplying by the denominator of the second highest power of the repeated root, in this case s plus 2, what we do is multiply it by the highest power of the repeated root s plus 2 the whole square throughout and that's what we get now we don't stop here but we differentiate the entire expression both left hand side and right hand side with respect to s and if we do that the left hand side ends up being this expression I'll let you figure out how to do this this is using the quotient rule on the right hand side what you're going to end up getting is we'll isolate p because we're differentiating this with respect to s so this becomes a 1 this becomes 0 the c which was a constant drops off and all of the terms this term this term and this term ends up having an s plus 2 in front of it so when you evaluate the right hand side at s equal to minus 2 this drops out this drops out this drops out and then you get an equi simple equation for p in this p case b equal to minus 1 divided by 100 the final step is if everything fails and especially you'll use this for terms that uh, correspond to the complex root because there's no easy way of finding the coefficients you end up doing brute force let me illustrate this by a simple example now you have this example here 2s divided by s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 so both roots are simple so they contribute these two terms now let's solve this by brute force you multiply throughout by the common denominator which is s plus 2 times s plus 3 and this is the expression you get and then you equate the coefficients of the constant term the s term s squared term so on and so forth in this case you have an s on the left hand side so a plus b s so a plus b equal to 2 equating coefficients of s and equating the constant term 3a plus 2b equal to 0 you solve that you get two simultaneous equations two unknowns b equal to 6 a equal to